Hello, everyone, and welcome to our third talk on careers and environment. Uh, for today, we're going to talk about uh, doing internships or working at the UN level. So I'm going to go first. My name is Laura. I was born in Colombia, but I grew up in Montreal. And two years ago, I had an amazing opportunity to work at the UN level. So I was part of uh, the UNA Canada's International Development and Diplomacy Internship. Uh, with this internship, you, you work, um, it is funded through the Government of Canada's Youth Employment Strategy. It allows youth to gain work experience in the United Nations systems. Uh, but to qualify for this program, you need to be between 18 and 30 years old. Uh, there's two cohorts per year. So um, I don't know with the pandemic how it's going to work, but normally they do this every year. So this internship offers successful candidates a six-month international placement at a UN agency. We work as junior professional consult consultants, so we're not only interns, and UNAC help us to create meaningful and SDG-focused position with the United Nations agencies, right? So uh, we're supported throughout the program. We have training and we are really supported. So I really recommend this program if you're interested in the UN, uh, in working at the UN. So uh, what is, I was working in UNDP Ukraine. So what is the UNDP? So the United Nations Development Program is the global development network from the UN. It advocates for change and connects countries to knowledge, experience, and resources to help people build a better life for themselves. Uh, yeah, we're guided by the Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs, also known as the Global Goals, we adopted, uh, this was adopted by all the member states in 2015, and it's a call of action to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity by 2030. So my role was uh, to work in the environment portfolio at UNDP in Ukraine. I work mostly in Kiev, the capital, so I worked for six years, and my focus was mostly on policy work. Uh, most of my tasks um, were to do research and understand how uh, environmental issues are affecting Ukraine and what can UNDP do to create solutions. So, for instance, uh, I completed an online course on gender and the environment, and we and we did a small presentation at the UN Gender Talks. These were talks that happen once a month, and many people were interested in learning about gender issues. I also did a lot of research, especially on evidence-based data about water scarcity at a global level, level, just because they really wanted to create programs around water in the country. So they were also doing, um, they were also creating uh, uh, environmental impact assessment. So I did research on how it's done at a global level to then put it in Ukraine. I also, uh, they were also working with, um, with how can political parties learn about green practices? So I did a lot of research on that. I also help with um, with writing a little presentation on peace preservation from internal and external partners. Finally, I also sometimes will write uh, little uh, things for people to talk about environment at uh, at conferences. So that was really really interesting. And I definitely learned a lot for my conference, for my time abroad. It was a great experience and I recommend it for everyone. Um, oh, fuck. Um, hello? Hello? Are you can, okay? Are you hearing? Yes, I can hear can you. Can you hear? But, yes, no problem. Like, just keep talking. Like, I'm oh, not okay. hearing you, but it's just no string of you. So just keep talking. Okay. Your voice is there. So I'm done, Joko, if you want to go oh. ahead. That, that's it? Oh. Oh, sorry, uh, Yeah, sorry. so it was like, okay. I don't know if you heard the presentation. Okay, sure. No problem. I'll start. So sorry, everyone. 
um, there was a technical problem with this, and our host is fixing the problem. And that was just me on the whole screen while Laura was talking. So yeah, I'm still there, actually, apparently. So anyway, I'll start my talk. So I have been to two workshops with Nine Nations while I was a student studying in Finland. I was doing masters in Finland for two years between 2016 and 2018. And so it was fortunate for me to attend Nine Nations conference because most of the conferences are in Europe. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Yoko Ru. I have a bachelor's degree in environmental science from Simon Fraser University. And I am currently just finishing up my master's degree in environmental biology with a minor in forestry and a specialty in environmental policy. And currently my main focus is on environmental policy. And I'm, I am the policy coordinator with the Canadian Youth Biodiversity Network. So well, so about United, attending United Nations conference. So the first conference I went was in Rome, which was, sorry, the, the first one I went was in Venice. It's ocean literacy with UNESCO. And it, and it was a high level conference and it's only invited only. So I received an email from Global Youth Biodiversity Network one day, and they want they were they were looking for someone who could att attend this workshop in Venice, and so I actually at the time it was like during my Christmas break, so I just went, and it was the perfect timing as well. So it was in December two thousand seventeen, and so I went there. I was invited by GYBN and it was two year two days conference and I met many people from the world, professionals, experts, and people working in this industry, as well as artists who represent ocean in artistic ways. And in this conference, it was there was panel panelists talking about the projects and and the like the government like what what the current government is doing and also at like artistic projects to showcase what is current doing for ocean literacy. So ocean literacy is about education of ocean basically, and one of the criteria that we, they were talking about was education. It was also one of the five cases we had to discuss as part of the discussion area. And in there, there was also the, the key people from you know, in, in the nations, and they also introduced to us what they're doing on on ocean literacy, as it's one of the initiative of the nations. So let me let me introduce what we actually talk about. And so among all the talks, we there was like about or over one hundred attendees from over the world, and so it's not just marine education, but we also talk about cultural and social aspects. And so during the after the panel, there was the there were like five different topics divided divided, and these five topics we all divide into groups, and it's about twenty people per group because it was one hundred people. So let me try to talk about the basic things we found out at the end of this conference. So the five topics were policing, government, formal education informal education, private sector, and civil society, and scientific communities. And so this is all talk about, it's not just education that they focus, focus on, but different institutions and com communities. 
so within policy government, the main area they were talking about were the strategies, like according to each country, and SDGs, sustainable development goals to to enhance for policymakers, linking also literacy with other SDGs. So formal education refers to schools. So it involves teachers to and to teachers to think about what to include into school curriculum and train teachers how to teach students improve knowledge. Informal education is all about training youth education. It's all about gaps, bridge the gap between country region and also build toolkits to address these gaps. So private sector it is basically integrate groups with ocean literacy and design modules and kits to make sure that the cap capacity development is implemented in each sector, not just environmental sector. And scientific communities is all about collaboration between the community stakeholders and de develop policy for the scientific com community, such as guidelines and regulations, and, and also promoting fundraising opportunities. So basically, I'm reading these things actually off a website, and I actually write this blog. And if you Google me up, like my name is Yoko Lu, so Y O K O, last name is L D U, the type in G Y B N, then you, you can find this show, show up on the first thing in the Google. And there is my blog, and please read it if you want more details. So at the end of this conference, we, we all learn from each other. And it was really interesting to meet other professionals and collaborate with youth. But one thing I noticed that there was not many youth, but then I was one of the few youth that associated with prof professionals. And so it was really, I learned, it was probably the first most important area in a professional world where youth can probably collaborate with professional professionals and come up with a, a plan to improve the future. So basically after this conference, there was a email list and an in email subscription that we, we, we still have some work to do. And we, so the ideas I gathered from the world and we still have each other even after the conference. It was a good opportunity. So this is the first conference. And this the other one, it's, um, it was organic soil carbon. It's not really climate change, but it's related to uh, climate change. So it was, so I was also in the university in Finland that my professor who was teaching about basics class on Finnish development, and he said he would go to this conference and he's, he was, that was last, that was his last semester, he was retiring. So I basically just talked to him, asking him if I could also go to this conference. He said, yes. It was like only one week before the conference started. It was last minute. So I asked him if he can ask them or, or gave me a contact to ask them if I can go. Yep, they said yes. So I kind of went straight one week afterwards to Loan to the um, to file office, the main office, food and agriculture organization in Rome was also it was like it was a three day conference. I mean I'm not going to go too much in detail, but it's very really similar format. There was panel experts talking about topics on the soil, and then there was discussion and also workshops. There was like a lot more people who attend this conference. It's not that small as the ocean literacy. So we just went to different rooms for different topics and pretty much it. So at the end, after we that, in this workshop, so we discussed ideas and talk about it. And then the host prepared everything and they write, they wrote down the details that each attendees 
discussed. And at the end of the, the final day, the fifth day, uh, the third day, then they would just talk about general results and talk about future plans. And like just like the Ocean Literacy Conference, there was a circulation of emails and there's this email subscription. And then we are still discussing about soil. Yeah, that's pretty much. I'm not a soil expert, but it was an experiment or oh, experience and to see how it went. It was a good opportunity. So I so I suggest that for you, if you have an opportunity to attend this high level conference conferences, I mean don't be shy just to ask them if we can join, if we can attend. Although in this most of these cases, if you can go, uh, it's mostly your own expenses. So if you can afford, in general, you're able to go as long as you contact them and they receive approval. I mean, if you receive approval, just go ahead and yes. And if you're a student with a poster, so in this case, it's mostly masters and above, but they are generally look more into PhD students, but masters can be acceptable. So if you could make a poster and present a poster, and then you, you, can, you can get some um, suggestions and some key experts, and maybe you can learn a like professorship or a job. I mean, I my friend has that happened before. Like he went to this conference. He I don't even I don't actually remember if he said he posted his poster, but he did network and talked with people, and he learned a job with. I believe it was a government office with climate somewhere in Halifax, I believe. So it's possible. So if there's opportunities, just be brave and step forward and try your best and just to see how it goes. I mean, I don't consider, I don't consider myself a brave person, but I'm more like free spirit. So I can I just go wherever I could. So sometimes it works. Just try it. I mean, that's kind of my in, in a nation's presentation. And I'm not sure if this is the name, but I hope it works. Uh, Laura, can you hear me? Hello. 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 Laura. Laura? So it seems that Laura has some problems with internet, Wi-Fi, or this application. OK, it seems that Laura isn't here. So I guess there's no Q&A session, which I'm hoping we have, we had. So let's just, so I guess we're done for this really short 20 minute quite, uh, session. I hope that this conference is, is really good. So if anyone's interested, please look at our, into our website, Canadian Youth Biodiversity Network. And our website is cybn.ca. And you can also join us on Instagram or Twitter and just volunteer to do some work with us or contact us for any other projects. Or if you're in your organization, please join us as well and collaborate with us. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.